So, very good afternoon to all of you. Um, welcome to this exciting session of Clean Environment. And thanks to BIDAC, uh, to the big conclave hosting the session, and thanks to SICID Kanpur. Uh, the theme is so interesting that I think it needs uh, much more attention uh, by all of us, uh, individually, just stakeholders, companies, professors, scientists, everyone, each one of us. And I am Rithunjay, I am from uh, KTBI from Bhubaneswar. I'll be going to moderate the session. And today, in this session, we have got very four eminent panelists members, and uh, let me introduce them very briefly. Dr. Amulya Panda, I think most of us, we know him. Dr. Panda is the director of NII New Delhi, and uh, he's by practice, he's a chemical engineer, but he, he can speak on semiconductors, he can speak on anything, you know, in the environment too. And uh, Dr. Amit Kapoor, um, Amit Kapoor, uh, the honorary chairman of uh, Institute of Effectiveness, and I was just going through his LinkedIn profile. I found a very interesting, uh, you know, comments about him that his ability to articulate complex problem statements and creates sharp, smart solutions is unique and exemplary. Welcome, you, Amit. We have a professor um, turned entrepreneur, and he's set up a company called Open Water. Dr. Sanjeev from IIC Bangalore is associate professor. And he's also going to share his story. We have the fourth panel member, Dr. Sonray Chaudhary, a lady from Tripura University of faculty members. And also, she has started her startup company called Waste to Well. I invite, I welcome all of you, and I welcome all the participants to this session. So let us make it more interactive. And all of us, you know, clean environment is very, very important. And we are all stakeholders to maintain it, to build new solutions. So let me ask for a few four panel members to start with a message as an individual, as a professor, as a starter. Are you maintaining? How are you supporting the clean environment? We start with uh, Dr. Amulya Panda. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. I got it. I think uh, the biggest lesson this pandemic has taught us, be with the environment, be with nature. And so the technology, what we are developing, whether it is biotech or uh, any other things, three things are essential. The water, environment, and waste. And when I talk about waste, I think we should have to do in a both way. Don't create waste. If you create waste, treat it. So I, I'll say, don't create waste. It is something like I do in NII, like vaccine. It is a proactive solution. Treat the disease before it comes. So don't waste this. Develop green solution. In fact, in the modern day-to-day -day thing, there is nothing called waste. Everything can be utilized till it goes to carbon or nitrogen or elements. I think the best thing will be minimize waste and treat the waste. That is things that will ultimately lead to a clean environment, water, and air. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Amit. Sound come good. Professor Amit, I'm in here, sir. Yeah. So, uh, Ritanjay, this this is a very interesting question as to uh, how do I really look at things. You know, like this pandemic has been something very uh, exciting in terms of like teaching the human race as to what is it that can go wrong. In fact, this pandemic tells us that we are absolutely fragile as a race and probably our time can actually go up and out in absolutely no time. So this is where it actually compels us to think that we need to go back to our roots and start respecting the environment and start working with it. Because otherwise, if you really look at it, uh, it could also like one of these pandemics, which can just snowball into something like a crisis, which is much bigger than this. It could, it could just mean that the human race ends and a new evolutionary process is going to happen. So what we need to say here is be respectful to the environment, work with it, and uh, look at the resources more respectfully and create solutions around it. Good. Thank you. That's a good note. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev. Uh, thank you uh, for this platform. Uh, my perspective is that uh, it's very philosophical, which is uh, we as humans are renting space and time on this planet. Uh, and we pay our rent by, you know, the second law of thermodynamics, which is uh, everything that we do, we exchange energy with the universe. So we need to respect and uh, keep this planet, uh, you know, as clean as possible. And of course, 
in our day to day activities, we generate waste. And uh, I believe that, and in fact, that's the genesis of my startup, which is we believe that we need to decentralize uh, waste management and waste treatment. That is, every individual takes responsibility for the waste they generate and not kick the can down the road, uh, hoping that somebody else will solve the waste problem. Uh, so that is the thought. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. Dr. Son. Yeah. Uh, I agree to what uh, my other three panelists mentioned. That's exactly how we look at it. But the way we would like to address it is by bi-directional first, by developing techniques which would minimize waste generation, and second, by taking care of one of the most essential resources, that is water, to treat it in such a way that wastewater in such a way that we could actually reuse it for non-portable purpose and we would miss uh, stop the misuse of you know fresh water for non-portable application so that's our take for the situation and that fits in with the current situation as well good thank you thank you i think all of you have set the stage for the next panel you know to ask questions to you and uh, so dr panda you've heard all of you have said need to build new processes you have to respect clean environment, environment, everything. So now, as you are from biopharmaceutical background, most of the processes people use are using lot many, you know, huge amount of water, releasing waters, chemicals to the system. How, as a scientist, you are telling the startups community or the, all of us that new processes need to be immersed, which are less polluting system? Any examples you can give us in the biopharmaceutical background, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh See, uh, you have to see traditionally if you take any biotech product. I'm not talking about diagnostics. You want to manufacture anything by traditional fermentation. Unlike a chemical reaction, these biological products always come in dilute solution. Maximum product concentration will be around 10%. So every time you make 10 liters of alcohol, you have to produce 90 liters of water. So what is this, this biological system itself is water sensitive. And again, as you are entering to modern biological things with recombinant GMO, you have an environmental problem. You treat water, you need clean water, but after washing with DNA, RNA, you need to treat them before you dispose it to environment. So water is more costly. More than water, the energy, because most of the biological reactions are at ambient temperature, depending on bacteria, yeast, you take around 26, 27, or maybe 30 degrees. So if your ambient temperature is 40, 45, like most of the places, we need to have a lot of chilled water. We need to put a lot of energy to cool it. For example, like take the vaccine. We are now struggling to provide cold chain. So that's an energy intensive process. And again, the, the waste you generate, the biological waste plus DNA and GMO contaminant. So anybody who want to do pharmaceutical or things has to develop process Exactly, look and see, 50 years back when we were making antibiotics like IDPL, HL, that time we had a lot of water. We are struggling to get water. We have a lot of big plants to make antibiotics. They don't work anymore because our yields are very, very low. Same thing with the alcohol. There is no water to grow uh, sugarcane. Forget about fermenting it. So I think any modern biological process, there are new technology coming. You have to take system or develop process with the component or whatever engineering you put, it should be requiring less water. Basically, carrying out a biological reaction at a high concentration, that's one. Use minimum energy so that you can use it in ambient temperature. You can make them thermostable. The enzyme can be cloned, expressed, make thermostable so that you don't need chilled water plant. And more importantly, the waste treatment. You have to take care of the waste properly. And I, I tell you, for all these things, see, the beauty of biological, or you can say beauty or complexity is you make urea, you make urea, urea is urea, you don't do anything. But when you make, you say you make insulin, you ferment it, you purify it, you formulate it so that insulin is useful. So all these three aspects, both fermentation, purification and formulation, things has to be done so that you save all these three components of energy, water, electricity and waste. And let me tell you, because one of the questionnaire was uh, uh, treating a lot of uh, this because of the pandemic we have got a lot of uh, PPP kit a lot of things please remember these are all solid there's are cellulogic so uh, I don't know how many of you do there is a solid state fermentation concept which people use for mushroom I think I'm not saying you grow mushroom on this 
old PPE kits, but the same technology which doesn't need what? Remember it. The way we are going another six months of pandemic, we'll have tons and tons of PPP kit and plastic, not plastic, even slow degradable. All you need to utilize, develop a fungus, utilize, develop solid state fermentation so that you can treat them without what? Without much energy. That will be a challenge. I think this will be a wonderful startup venture for anybody who wants to start. Can you use this PPE kit, globes, or masks, which are nothing but carbon component, use a fungus, degrade it, and produce a edible fungus? That, I think, I think I'll end with that. So three areas we need to do, both energy, water, and waste. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Panda. I think you gave a very good idea that, you know, grow fungus on those PP kit, by you know, cellulosic biomass mass. I think it's a good one. I think I'll move to Dr. Amit because, you know, I know Amit uh, Savi is a very, what do you call it, a policy. He writes a lot of policy things. And Dr. Uh, Amit, you see India as a country now going to this pandemic and how focus on cleaner environment would help enhance the competitiveness of the country, At, you know, focus on Indian context. So, uh, you know, Mirtanjiji, this is a very important question that we have to grapple with as an economy or as a country itself. Uh, in fact, a very simple thing, like when you talk about clean environment, I'll actually go to a very simple step called waste. Waste means that we are not using our resources properly. So if what we need to fundamentally understand is that we need to improve our processes and we need to improve our manufacturing systems or whatever we are doing, wherein we are reducing our waste. And if I really look at that principle, what happens is that it actually takes care of two objectives. Uh, because any objective which is more pertaining to reduction of waste, circular economy as an idea, it means that we are taking care of two things that are social objectives and economic objectives. Because when you talk about this whole idea of circular economy, I think it fundamentally brings down that we have to talk about social objectives. We, because when you talk about water, uh, water availability is going to be a uh, problem in India in the coming few decades. So if you really look at the Indo-Gigantic Plain, the numbers state that by 2050, 2060, we are going to have severe water crunch, severe water crisis. So what it means is that it is it is a question of protecting our environment. It is a question of really saying that we have to improve the quality of life of our people. How do we actually enhance their quality of life? So you have to bring in that whole social frame into our mind that it is all about ease of living and quality of life. And having said that, a very simple thing, if I'm if I'm able to reduce my waste, it can actually add something like close to about 250 to 300 uh, billion dollars uh, to Indian, Indian economy over a period of time. So that's a lot of saving that can actually happen uh, for the Indian economy. It, of course, from a fundamental customer, what you call company point of view, it would also take care of uh, what would you call as say profitability. It enhances profitability. If I'm able to use those things, that's where it is. So when I talk about competitiveness, there are different sets of uh, actors here. So the firms which have to behave properly, you have the government which has to create the environment, which it actually does try to. And the third is we need to actually be self-responsible. In fact, the pollution crisis that we see in the country, I think uh, it is more, I'm going to make a very blasphemous statement. A lot of people will not like my that's good. That's good for all of us. Yeah. And do that. The, sta the statement here is that if you really look at it, it is greed which actually defines a lot of our activities as people. Uh, so when you talk about, say, the way we are actually building our landscape in cities, the way people build it, it is greed for money that they'll actually create uh, what you call buildings which are larger, which are not uh, mandated by law. Uh, the burning of crop is actually again driven by greed. In fact, I belong to a far what you call fa family of farmers itself. And mm -hmm. if you have a large piece of land, what you will say, oh, the fine that is going to be given is about 10,000 rupees for not uh, for burning. I might as well actually burn the crop and I'll actually save yes. money. So it is actually driven by greed as a process. So we need to tell people that your greed is going to kill the environment. It is going to kill the economy. But if you are actually able to give this nudge to people, you can fundamentally alter the very state of uh, uh, the whole way we are actually talking about things. So circular economy, competitiveness, all embedded together. It is all about quality of life. But pollution, water, it has to be seen in a very, very close uh, what you call way right now. Because if you don't get it right, it is going to be challenging in the future. But I think the solutions that we can see today are so tremendous. that, uh, And I see this: there is a great hope with young people uh, who are really talking about entrepreneurship or creating enterprises around it, which can uh, be just absolutely stunning. 
Yeah, over you. to you. Bhikandi. I think you know. I'll I'll put up my second question to you immediately because Dr. Panda is not there. You know, both of you spoke about building the solution, smart solutions. Now, don't you think once you build smart solution, new processes comes up, the whole process cost is going to be expensive. Then on the other side, you talk about affordability for startups for the products. Now you talk about smart solution, which is expensive. How do you how do you see the future of this? Are you far away from this? It is commercially viable. Dr. Panda is going to say something. Uh, see, I I'll just sorry, Dr. Ka, Professor Kapoor. Is there is nothing called expensive. You have to take care of the environment. If you remember, if you don't have air and water, what expenses you will do? You are not. But Dr. Panda, who is going to pay for it? Who is going to pay for it? I know you are going to push no, your technology, which is you will only pay when you are alive. Mutinda, it's like you know, I I I I I I take care of a vaccine in Chut. Uh, they ask me what is so important about the vaccine. I say, look, if you have a, a if you want to go somewhere, suppose you have a motor car, you can go. If you don't have a motor car, you can walk, or you can go with a taxi. But if you don't have a vaccine, now you die, and you die only once. So, what do you want to go to do? <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good That's way of convincing people, see, right? What, what the doctor Kapoor <laughs> is saying? See, our population is increasing. We are using more cleaner environment. We have to have air and water. There is no question. Yeah. No question about that. There is no water, no air. We will leave. We want to leave like that. Otherwise, I think in the future to come, it will be mandatory. First, so that you are recycling the all water. You are not doing any air dirty and leaving to the uh, gone are those days in our childhood. You to see long chimney and leaving all smokes. Those days now not Thank allowed. You. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Amit. Anything you want to respond to this? No, so so you know, like uh, I have to agree with uh, Panda Sab here. You know, like the question is very important. And this question itself, from my point of view, is wrong. And the question is wrong because, you know, like, who's going to pay for it? The question is, it's a collective responsibility for all of us as society to take care of whatever we actually have. In fact, the question is that we have to leave a better planet for the future or we have to leave a worse off planet for the future. So, uh, right. in fact, when you talk, the solution, if you really look at it, if there is a solution, people are going to pay for it because it's a service as a thing that is going to make my quality of life better. Uh, how many of us could have actually believed about 20 years back that we would all actually be installing a very idiotic product, which is not good, like an RO system in our house, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. has its own environmental <laughs> issues. But you, you have the RO, you have the battery backups that are there, or you actually have air purifiers now. So that means people are willing to pay. The question pay is it. going to be that I'm going to be willing to pay for a quality product. In fact, the whole idea of organic farming, as you're looking at it, people are willing to pay for it. So the yeah. question is, we have to provide a solution and that is where it is going to happen. In fact, what Dr. Panda was saying on the vaccine for, say, COVID in today's par parlance, it, do you think anyone in this country will say, I'm not going to pay for the vaccine? I yeah, think they no. would. They, of course, there are going to be some crack. Whatever you charge, you didn't pay for it. Got it. I got your message. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Amit. I think, you know, whatever you raised, let us hear from two uh, academicians who have started their companies again for, you know, this clean environment concept. Uh, Dr. Um, Sanjeev, uh, being an academician, scientist at ISC Bangalore, having a good life in Bangalore in the institution. What, you know, how did you start this company called Open Water? And at what stage you are? And from these two panelists members, I'm raising a question for you. Is it going to be commercially viable? So that's a message you should give it to the audience. Uh, thank you. I'll try to be as brief as possible. That's uh, quite a vast question. Uh, but just picking up from the previous question, I think we are all sitting in the same boat. Uh, so who takes the cost? And this boat is sinking if you do not do something about the environment. So we have to all make a collective effort. Now, as an academic, uh, normally what I would do is, yes, it is a very comfortable life. IAC is a lovely place. And uh, we would normally write papers. We would take taxpayers' money. We will uh, fund our labs. We will write papers. And the papers will be locked up in journals for which the taxpayer has to, again, pay money to receive, uh, you know, the output of our research. Okay, so that doesn't seem like a very uh, conducive or a very nice solution when it comes to problems such as water and environment. So when it... Uh, when it came to this personal interest of mine, which is water, uh, I decided that I will not uh, write any papers as of now. And instead, we will try to get out of the lab, uh, take some discomfort and uh, start some, uh, start a venture where we try to decentralize uh, wastewater treatment. And why did I come up? There are already many solutions for water. But uh, as uh, you know, Professor uh, Amit 
nicely pointed out, many of these solutions create a lot of problems. Uh, they leave a trail of problems uh, behind. So if you go to any, uh, let's say, hotel or any uh, a place where they claim to be doing wastewater treatment, you will probably see a shack which is actually doing nothing. And the reason for that, it is more expensive and there's a huge logistic barrier towards them treating water. It could be because of membranes or chemicals and so on. So what we did is, uh, you know, we said, OK, we are uh, academics. We consider ourselves to be very creative. So let's build a washing machine style system uh, where every user can actually plug it into a socket and without using membranes or chemicals, treat the water for themselves. And that is what our product is. And uh, we took it out of the lab. We had our struggles and uh, there are many pitfalls, advantages and disadvantages I can talk about. Uh, but then uh, we initially started off with one milliliter a minute, a minute and uh, ran to the funding agencies and said, uh, please fund our startup. And they said the one milliliter a minute is a joke. Uh, come back later. And uh, we are right now, we right now have a mobile platform which can do 25,000 liters a day which is still mm -hmm. small in the water industry, but it's good. We are at a good scale. Uh, we, have, we have already got a few customers who are interested in treating sewage and so on. So I think overall the journey from academics, you know, from that very comfortable academics till this point has been very productive. It's been a very happy feeling. I mean, it's, it's a nice thing that you're actually doing something and your research is actually impacting the society very immediately. Uh, so uh, that's my answer. You know, that's what drove me out. My great, great. Uh, uh, plus all these philosophical points uh, which I have raised. Great story. Very inspiring one, Dr. Sanjeev. I think keep it up. Uh, Dr. Son is from Tripura University. You know, it's a very difficult place. You're thinking about a startup. And Son is a very prolific uh, orator, a very good startup. So, Son, um, uh, what are the clean environment technology you are now in your startup you are doing called Waste okay. to Wealth, right? Right. Briefly right. tell us. Yeah. yeah. So we concentrate on wastewater treatment, mostly micro-based wastewater treatment. So the three technology which we have been able to develop till now are Before that, one question to you. Are you, yeah. are you. are you enjoying what you are developing, like Dr. Of Sanjeev course. said? I am of more productive. Yeah. Okay, good. Absolutely. It's not just that me and my group, we are, we are also training the second generation manpower to think differently and to get into entrepreneurship. Being in a Very university, good. that's a big advantage. And uh, what we have been able to do till now is, you know, municipal wastewater or agricultural wastewater treatment. So this we have been able to scale up to about two point uh, uh, roughly three meter cube per day capacity, where this is within two hours. We treat uh, the uh, entire municipal wastewater, sequestering the nutrient. The second technology that we have been able to develop is on petrochemical wastewater treatment. This system is working at East India Petroleum Limited, Vishakha Patnam, from 2016 onwards. So charging one senate is uh, continuously performing the function. That's the speciality of the product that we develop. That's a biofilm-based system where we charge once and it works. And the third technology that we have is on dairy wastewater conversion to liquid biofertilizer. That also we have been able to scale up to uh, 9,000 liter per day and 11,000 liter per day uh, level at two different places uh, in India. So that's the scale at which we were able to take. Thanks to the government funding, enabled us to you know go ahead with this. And Barak has a big role to play in it. Of course, we are enjoying every bit of it. Not very easy, but of course it's much more rewarding and Good. we had our partners thank you thank you thank you son thank you civil said uh, dr amit i'll come to you now for the second one because you you know promote more of this policy kind of stuff look at the startups now in indian context look at you know the support schemes most of them are from medtech the healthcare devices diagnostics now the one said called clean tech now what business models uh, do you anticipate or foresee in the future, focusing on the clean tech startups. Any message you want to give? Because there will be many experience who are building clean tech startups. So, you know, uh, this is again a great question. And when you say about uh, what you call uh, the models that are going to be successful, I think there are going to be people who are entrepreneurs you know, to create their business models. But from my point of view, this model, which is able to scale itself, is going to be a model which has to be looked at. Today, I cannot actually look at solutions which are going to be localized or whatever. I think if I have a localized solution, I need to have a model wherein I'm able to scale it up 
if i'm able to if i'm wanting to create a water solution then that water solution has to be scalable to say from from one village to 650000 villages across the world or it has to be able to penetrate across households so can i actually create those scalable solutions is the key because it's it's passe that i'm going to create something which is going to be small used by 10 people 20 people or whatever the problem is gargantuan and it is going to be about scalable models in the future today what i see is there is a challenge that people either do not actually uh, look at that scale or whatever uh, let me give you an example you know i had this very interesting uh, conversation at one point in time uh, i was actually sitting in uh, the reliance uh, office and uh, i had this uh, great uh, fortune of meeting uh, mr ambani and you know like i i suddenly realized the difference between him and a lot of other people he's also an uh, what do you call an entrepreneur first generation second generation has done something oh, yeah. wonderful but what he think was thinking is can i create a solution for 1.5 billion people so mm-hmm. his model is 1.5 billion people not just something like 10000 people or whatever it is like a story of this like you know like uh, sanjeev said something very interesting mm, on academics so the question is when you talk about academics academics don't make money uh, iq on iq sanjeev has greater iq than any film actor in the world but he makes much lesser than any of the actors in the world why why does that actually happen because he's talking from one to few hundred people uh, like what we will do but then that actor will actually be talking to millions of people he probably makes 1 rupee per person we probably make 1000 or 10000 per person but the scale is absent so what i'm saying is scale is the question but thank you thank you uh, uh, dr panda i'll come to you because you know you are from chemical engineer lot many polymers are now being used because you know during the pandemic before the pandemic now again the group of startups coming up in the clean tech sector called biopolymers now biopolymers at the r&d stage is very good i think good publications patents do you think the biopolymers can replace polymers is is it far from reality or it is going to be true see if you look back when uh, i think cell uh, corporation or somebody i don't remember around 1980 or 90s they started making this psb and making things it was a big news that you can degrade but so what is psb what is psb polyhydroxy butyrate polyhydroxy boot so the the biodegradable film you get these are degradable because they will degrade because these are anhydrides they degrade by hydrolysis and easily degradable but again look very jaji that you are making phb but then you have to calculate the polyhydroxy boot will come from fermentation and fermentation come from glucose glucose come from photosynthesis and that come from some plant you have to calculate for making 1 kilo of total carbon cycle how much you do it's something like making alcohol from straw we know it's a wonderful way of making alcohol but calculate how much water is needed to grow 1 liter 1 1 ton of sugarcane nobody asks for that because sunlight and water is free so calculate how much of that is needed see when you are doing this green technology so called the sustainability is important will it be able to sustain then i again i'm sorry i again go back always to my vaccine concept prevention is better than cure why do you want such waste material to be done and you know anyway we are burning lot of petrol isn't it we are learning yeah. about petrol but so the question is do you think biopolymers can replace polymers in near future see look the the if you take polyethylene how much rupees around 3 dollar a kg can psb be made in 3 dollar a kg as simple as that economics doesn't work forget about the biology efficiency polyethylene is 3 dollar to your 5 dollar so unless you come to that scale we, we have made wonderful progress in phb the yields are very good but again maybe for no i don't think for normal use maybe for a special use you can use phb where you want to degrade and and please remember being in biology field we all get excited biodegradable biodegradable but there are enough scope where you don't want thing to degrade like you want to feed a part in a aeroplane you don't want certainly not it to be biodegradable so it's not biotech is the solution for every damn thing in this no way good 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 good, good. thank you sir thank you well said something degradable something also you don't want to be degraded yeah good one thank you so i'll come to uh, now son the son you mentioned about three technologies your lab is developing and you set up your startup company 
and i have been hearing such technology from many people during our big grant you know big grants now how you know what is the special in these three things so you you stand out from others and is commercially viable right uh, so like for most these three technologies that i talked about the speciality in our case is unlike most of the other system where you have to go on adding the microbes from time to time or the feed it's a one time charging and it goes on working unless there's a major difference in terms of the operational procedure a major problem like for example the biofertilizer production system uh, that's the battery treatment plant has been working since uh, april 2018 without any breakdown the petrochemical uh, waste water treating system at eipl that's also working from uh, november 2016 onwards without any breakdown so we are talking about a much faster performance than what normally the conventional system takes we are talking about a one time charging and a stable system requiring little maintenance we are talking about sludge free systems that are generated so that the downstream processing of what might come as a waste is also reduced on top of it the cost is if it is at par with the conventional system then there are uh by products generated from where they can recover the entire investment in 4 years as in case of eipl or actually it is much cheaper and since it's a much faster system the space requirement also goes down so it's economically viable too more important because of the performance the carbon dioxide equivalent emission is substantially low about 60 to 90% less carbon dioxide emission as compared to a conventional system for these three uh, setups that we are talking about so that's what makes it different and that's what made us feel that perhaps we should go for a startup where we can promote this and we can actually look for a way to protect the environment by minimizing Great. the thank you waste. thank you so thank you you know i was just looking at the chat box discussion box somebody is writing very good every paisa extra spend in clean tech sector save a lot in the health sector i think that's a well said good i think i'll come to uh, dr sanjeev sanjeev you know being from academics i know a lot many challenges you might have faced so what i will be asking a question to you what are the pitfalls challenges and the advantages you see in academic setup to start you know start of kind like you okay uh nice question i uh, i'll first talk about the pitfalls so as scientists we do not appreciate business and business development okay so when we step out of the lab we do not listen to the market we do not listen to what the user needs uh, we think that this our research is the best and we try to look see where our research fits into the market now that's a very bad way to go about it and this is something i learned uh, rather quickly uh, through a lot of advice and uh, i could improve upon that and because of this i have also had uh, some problems which is i missed some very good talent in bus- regarding business development very early on i wish i could get those people back but at that time we could not appreciate these things so this is the biggest pitfall i would say uh another problem is uh micromanaging uh, the people in the team okay now you do not want to run a startup like the way you run your lab you need to trust your people you need to let them go because they are very young uh give them some guidance but you know let them be a bit adventurous at the same time you know, a bit uh focused as well uh the biggest disadvantage for an academic i would say is that you also have other responsibilities you have to teach iisc is not going to uh, say you know stop teaching or stop doing research. uh and therefore we cannot give 100% of our time so that is a very big disadvantage whereas a startup really needs a lot of it takes a lot of energy uh and the biggest advantage is that you have a safety net now i do not know whether that's an advantage or a disadvantage honestly uh i think uh if you have if you're living on the dangerous side a little i think your startup will do better but it's good as an individual to know that you have a safety net you will have some salary and you have some backup and probably since you're from an institute of a high repute i would say i think you're losing him sometimes yeah, yeah. uh it gets a little easier so those are the three uh things you know the pitfalls great and disappointment good good well said well said now i'll come to dr panda uh, because you know the the covid pandemic has hit everyone you us the whole globe now what is your suggestion to startups because most of the audience is from startups 
uh, the innovators who are in the process of making clean tech startup companies is going to rise up because if you look at the Indian context, more med tech, I think mostly 60, 70 percent, less clean tech companies are startup. So what will be your suggestion to uh, the emerging clean tech startup? They should start it, the big boom or? No, if you ask me, I don't have much of business background, but I tell you, every uh, every disturbance or every calamity give you a wonderful opportunity. Look, even you may, nobody knew six months back if anybody can start making masks and make money or maybe uh, supply chains or, or many things or PPP we are making. What is important is in th this four months time, we have become self-sufficient in making masks. Maybe may, many of may say, what is big deal? But the point what uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Amit was telling, the scale, we have been, remember, we have 1.5 billion people. And we have been able to give now, wherever you go, people have a mask. We have been able to deliver that scale. So there is huge opportunity because of our population. And gone are those days where you have to provide to some people and others with internet and digital revolution, everybody wants. So I believe this is the best time to start up, whether you want to make a kit. You see, somebody just make a box. Look at uh, two people. I don't know whether you heard about them. They make an antibody which... Uh, um, uh, detect the uh, the RNA vaccine which is synthetically made, some byproducts. Some French people, they were in village and they are supplying to all over the team. I mean, making even antibody, if a reagent, buffer, syringe, needle, even disposable, even small buffer pouch. These are enormous opportunity it, from two, th two aspects, I believe, for the startup. Uh, it gives an opportunity because the market is huge. And number two, uh, what in the morning they are saying, it's innovation according to the requirement of India. It's innovation. I think right. morning Professor Masalkar said, yes. it's yes. our requirement. What we need, we don't get that in uh, Italy or Germany. But that's why I tell this is the best time for any uh, uh, innovator to start because market demand is huge. Anything, if you can convince, you are there. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think people should talk about in more about manufacturing you know, as per our need also. We should not get everything from outside. It has to develop by startups in India. Good. Thank you, sir. And I think go to uh, Dr. Amit. Dr. Amit, look at the whole situation again. What do you think would drive entrepreneurs or startups in India, especially focusing on the clean tech sector? Oh, so, you know, like when you ask that question, I think couple of things. One is that entrepreneurs per se have to be driven by purpose. What is it that they're really trying to solve? Because there is that inherent desire to solve. That is what it is. Uh, but before that, I also want to say like if what Sanjeev was saying that people are, uh, Sanjeev, sorry, I'm picking, picking your statements up, but then I, I just love them. But what he actually did say was that, you know, like as an academic, uh, there is that safety net. So my belief, uh, and a very strong one is that if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, one, you should first fail in one of your enterprises that you're creating because it gives you a huge learning. Second, you should get fired from a job. Uh, if you have achieved both these things, you are going to be very, very successful as an entrepreneur because that's when you realize that you don't have any other place to go and you'll put your 100%. And that is what it is. So get fired, do something different. But third is the question of... Uh, I don't want that to happen to you, Sanjeev, but that's a separate issue. <laughs> uh, but then uh, the question is purpose. Like, what is it? What is the purpose that I actually have? What is it that I want to solve? And looking at this, I think what all these companies or all these young people can look at is one, how do I reconceive the needs and products and uh, the customers that I'm actually wanting to uh, saw, look at? So it is about reconceiving that whole idea of what we are really trying to solve. Uh, how do we redefine productivity across the value chain? In fact, that is what Dr. Panda was also saying. You know, like when you talk about PPEs, can I use PPEs in mushroom growing or whatever? And the, uh, again, looks like a weird idea, but that could be a very powerful thing that you can actually use those uh, things. So how do you reconceive things across the value chain? And last but not the least, it's about creating that local business environment or operate in that ecosystem and take people along and things would actually transform into something very, very interesting and powerful. In fact, Zomato for that matter, if you really look at it, I, I know it's an example outside of this uh, discussion, but mm -hmm. they are all about using an ecosystem of people who are there. So what they call as driver partners, 
Now, there are people who are getting engaged in something very, very interesting, but then they're using a local resource that is available and do something very, very interesting, are able to scale up and beats the world. Uh, Dr. Panda has to negate my view now, please. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, no, 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 I'm not negating. I'm just supporting what Sanjay do because I'm also in the academics. Uh, I believe, think about that. Uh, when I run my lab, maybe I'm heading a lab, I think Professor San should say, any successful professor in this team should remember, he's actually an entrepreneur. He's in a country like this, I write my own project, I get funding, I get people, I run my consumable. The only thing that my product is a paper which I enjoy. All you have to do is divert a little bit, don't publish paper, publish, deliver a product. Otherwise, we are all entrepreneurs. Please remember, the scientist as a lab in charge in my lab, or anybody who is successful scientist, there are a couple of them, they are all entrepreneurs because we all get salary only. Other things, what we do, we go, we fight everywhere. Other DBT, DST, get our funding. Once I get my funding, I get equipment, I hire people, I do some research, I deliver. Only thing you have to divert. Don't publish paper, publish a product. It's an old saying, like birds, we know how to fly. Only we are sitting and enjoying maybe a little bit. Somebody has to tick us or throw a stone. Oh man, you have a wings, fly, fly how much you can do. That's a support to Sanjeev. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I know uh, Dr. Sanjeev doesn't look um, old, but you know, Dr. Sanjeev, what kind of advice you will give to young researcher, young innovators, young startup that to translate their ideas? Uh, the first thing is uh, have the courage to step out of the lab uh, because I've seen a lot of uh, students who are very smart uh who gets sort of stuck into this academic environment they, they do not like to leave it or if they do they you know like to go and work for some other organization and do what they are very comfortable with and uh so do not stop at your research uh, i'm sure i mean you're still very young you have many years in, ahead of you even if you fail there is nothing uh, there is nothing wrong in it and in fact it's always looked at as in a positive way that you took this courageous step uh the second thing is uh, when you step out First, listen to the market and then step out, which is try to understand what is the problem that the society is trying to solve and then try to see how you can use your creativity, which might be outside your scope of research. So, for example, uh, uh, my startup is on water, but I'm actually a semiconductor. I do semiconductor device physics and integrated circuits. Uh, of course, we borrowed some ideas from there to develop our startup. Uh, but you listen to what problems the people are trying to solve and then uh, try to pitch your or you know orient your creativity and your focus and your energy uh, towards building such a solution uh, that is my advice to the young researchers thank you thank you to sanjeev you know, to son you come from tripura you know and the startups uh, should also bring impact now a question to you that sitting in tripura doing such exciting work uh, what impact you brought to your local ecosystem can you tell us can you tell the startups uh, and all of us right uh, well, uh, it was not very easy, but since it is a cutoff area from the mainland as compared to what facilities are there, it also added as an advantage. You know, since there were less of such technologies available, we had people who were ready to test it at their site, including the first uh, industry to allow us to, uh, to set up the biofertilizer treatment plant. Similarly, the students they since they have relatively less choice relatively less option you know they are ready to try out new things and they have an inherent you know passion for entrepreneurship as compared to the conventional way of doing things that we normally find in the mainland so that has been an immense uh, i would say boon and that really is trying to change the system here and it started with perhaps one faculty, but now we have many, including quite a few students and scholars who are into it. So it is much slower than it would have, it should have been perhaps, but overall it has started and I'm sure it's going to take up very soon. So Great. getting less resources sometimes can be a big boom to start with. Thank you. Thank you, Sandesh. Well said because Tripura is going to rise with your innovations and startups, right? You have to motivate others to get into this. Now, what are your plans for next two years? I know you're a professor. Don't talk about that. Talk about your startups. Plan for next two years, three years in terms of startups. Right. 
So what we have uh, we have been planning is that what are the different things that we are doing? We are trying to ensure that we put them into actual use. From lab to a pilot scale is what we have been able to do, and in some cases we have taken up to the industrial scale. But we want to replicate that so that by the time I end my tenure, I can say yes, I really. the recognition in terms of award it's real application and the tie up so that me along with the entire manpower that is getting trained can take it forward and it could really add I to think... the environmental state got it thank, thank you. you thank you sir uh, so this is this questions to all of you and it start with dr panda and then follow dr amit uh, what are the emerging clean tech innovation platforms you see that can disrupt the whole market and keep in mind the pandemic situations post pandemic so what are the clean tech platform which is going to disrupt i i cannot say because i am not uh, much from the market i think uh, professor amit will be able to say but i think the clean water and air these are important things these are important things and uh, one good thing we have established that uh, from this six month pandemic we have the capacity to develop world class diagnostic within small thing for a complex disease remember this virus is not easy still we don't understand the immunology this six month we have that inherent capability anything we take it as a challenge i think what uh, professor kapoor was saying you have to get rid get rid of the safety net and see because in march april we didn't have any choice we have to develop indigenous buffer rna kit as a system so i think these are the things we need to i mean organize in a nice way and put it and we are capable we have everything we can be we can capable of doing and solving things uh, but i i will still believe water and air these are the things uh, to be the first priority so i think well said because during this time i could see scientists talking about scale talking about product development market so this is a good i think we learned a lot of things and in future we much smarter to face this pandemic so dr amit any thoughts on this i think uh, just a very quick thing like we did talk about water and air uh, we missed one thing and in fact i think that's going to be one very big opportunity on clean tech and that is going to be energy and especially energy storage uh if somebody is able to solve that problem uh in terms of like reduction in size of the battery units or whatever you're saying and reduce the carbon footprint that they have it is going to be fundamentally huge because if you really look at how the world is moving all vehicles i think the car that i you guys or any one of you buy today is possibly going to be the last internal combustion engine car that most of us are going to buy because it is all going to go to Uh, electric vehicles and whatever so clean tech is going to be everywhere you will need those battery solutions if somebody is able to do that it is just phenomenal uh, he is probably the next elon musk or whatever okay. and uh, that's that's where it is yeah thank you so any comments on this well i agree with them that what would be essential is a much uh, you know reduction in the accordingly the gas emissions the co2 emission and also ensuring that there is less misuse of essential things which could be used for other purposes so it's a reuse and recover from the waste so that there could be a value addition that would make a difference i i feel so good thank you uh, dr panda and uh, all of you you know pandemic time people have been using several plastic and polymer based you know products releasing lot many waste start from pp kit to the pen dogs the tubes using for artificial you know billions number you have produced and dr panda said i can use pp you know the materials for growing mushrooms by using fungal they could digest now now any such technology which is now under development and you see startups are doing exciting work or bigger companies solving this and moment let's use any ideas on that so startups can get some ideas and start thinking it no no see the pp thing i told because it's a carbon fiber it is made up of cellulose and things so probably a fungus can grow rather than dumping it you can use them and clean them and sterilize them and that may be one uh, vague idea what but, other what other things can be done what other things yeah, can so, be done so i'm coming to that but 
particularly for for plastic and things you can't degrade them so fast because they are all usually in polycarbonate or maybe whatever so and there are huge numbers coming the open drop to you by pool so somebody has to do either they, they hydrolyze them or press make different composite materials so that things can be done i think those are the thing nowadays people are using uh, road making material from coal tar and this and that these are certain issues and you can make uh, small or you can recycle them and reuse them as a different plastic uh, may not be for a food grade plastic but some of the things so certainly rather than dumping them throwing them they 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 are, they, they give good opportunity great thank you to amit any thoughts on this could could you just repeat the question so uh, what you know because so much of waste has been generated now starting from pp to plastics so what emerging technology you can think of or you have seen people are building it up any suggestion for startups but you have to be smart now now to manage all the waste yes we, i think there is an opportunity there but for some reason i have not seen any new thing that has really emerged uh, which is opportunity for the, that's an opportunity Absolutely. for all of us to think you know and build some i think i'll go to dr sanjeev for that so can it be a open west next platform like open water you have now west it's called open water open west any uh, product uh, is yeah it, it sounds uh, sounds good i uh, was sorry i dropped out my internet i had an outage i don't know what but uh, anyway so uh, it definitely we need to recycle the waste so for example let us say if you talk about water treatment and let's say you're talking about uh, treating sewage uh, whatever comes out if you can recycle it back into fertilizer or if you can recycle it back into fuel uh, it helps uh, but i'm not sure if it's possible with all uh, you know all kinds of waste because a lot of the waste that are synthetic uh i'm not very really aware of uh, you know whether everything can be recycled but to as much as possible uh, it should be done uh, you know otherwise uh, otherwise it is not really sustainable there is there is some accumulation of whatever waste we generate at some point and, and if it's not completely used up it's, uh, it's so just uh, for just for curiosity what are they now doing with this waste at the moment because now it's really huge pile up right what are they yeah. doing uh i i have seen some few interesting uh you know startups so i can mention a few so if you look at these aluminum cans that are being thrown out after drinking let's say a pepsi or a coca cola you you have all these aluminum cans uh i have seen startups use these cans crush them up and use them as electrodes for batteries or use them as uh you know electrodes for even wastewater treatment uh using a technique called as electrocoagulation uh so that is one uh uh method of cycling that i have uh, that sort of picked my interest uh but then uh, i i i'm not i'm not much of a, a chemical engineer or a biochemist to really address uh, all other kinds of ways uh but uh, you know there are startups that are trying to do it but i have not seen many of them it's not right. uh, dr panda wants to something yeah. yeah i think the best way will be to segregate which are biodegradable and non degradable and depending on that should be the first rather than putting them together now there's what comes uh, one big sign come these are all contaminated virus waste so you dump everything tubes uh, epen drop syringe pp kit gloves and things i think time has come because the volume is huge you can segregate them biodegradable and non degradable and depending on that people can start even segregating them nicely with itself will be idea how to segregate them from contaminating stuff remember we are dealing with a stuff uh, which supposed to be contaminated with the coronavirus you have to take care of the people and remember you when you are trying to create some waste the healthcare system because knowing or knowingly the person who is doing may or may be may not be exposed to the virus so that part has to be done a, a quick testing method things like that yeah something has lighten up with amit which will listen to <laughs> no no i was just wanting to say and fact, i do remember one thing that i did read at some point that in uk they are trying to use ppes or wasted PP, used ppes to produce energy and they are saying yeah, that they possible. can actually uh, so what they are saying is they can produce close to about 2 to 3% of the energy requirement of uk uh, through uh, the effort of using this technologies and probably of course when they probably have to go through that burning process or uh, i think you call it as the incinera- incineration process no no, no. see uh, dr amit it's like as i told you it goes back 
what this PPEs are made up of. You put there, see, any fuel will have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. See, yeah. when you make yeah. petroleum or diesel or ethyl alcohol. So, the more easily you make one of them, you can use it. Absolutely. In fact, I also read that there are genes which are being made out of uh, PP kind of stuff or whatever. Yeah, so, so can you can you can you upcycle this uh, in a waste or do you think always recycle things? Can you make something oh. else out of it? It's upcycle process, right? I think so. Like I want to make problem. pillows. I want to make pillows. Maybe a blanket out of this. Um, you know, maybe like, like somebody will have to test it. Doctor Panda will help with that. No, 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 no. Because even if you kill the virus, the RNA DNA part will be there. I'll be very, very careful because please, remember, as I told you, all these things will be contaminated with the virus, which you don't understand. Even one year has gone, you don't understand whether the you may say I have to claim the virus is gone, but what is important in this virus is the nucleic acid, RNA or DNA, and if that get activated somewhere. I don't want that should come close. So use them or transform them so that the biological part is lost. You can do it. That should be a more safe thing. Uh, one uh, one option is since all these are uh, you know uh, not so easily degradable such materials. Uh, I have always wondered whether these can be used for things that always keep breaking down. For example, like our roads. I don't yeah. know about roads in the different cities, but uh, at least in Bangalore, it's not the happiest of uh, things when you travel. That's true everywhere. <laughs> so can can this be sort of made into some kind of a, a technology which can help uh, you know increase the duration or the durability of roads or uh, uh, you know infrastructure that we use say buildings or bricks uh, for example good thank you thank you i think you know because uh, i'll be requesting uh, son you want to say something yes please. yeah there was one more thing perhaps we uh, some startup could look at like when we since my group works on wastewater treatment so now one of the very crucial thing that one needs to keep in mind, especially the companies which are involved, who have been assigned, you know, for this wastewater so recycling or so, we perhaps need some method to detect for the presence of COVID virus in the wastewater. Because after all, this is an occupational hazard for somebody who's working. And there are companies like Thermax or others who are into wastewater treatment. So for them, it is very essential. If some company could look into, you know, development of kits, which could screen into it so that one knows that the person who's working is in a safe zone or not. Because then we cannot think of reusing it by the conventional wastewater treatment process. There has to be something else. So a rapid detection there is essential. All right. Thank you. I think I don't know where to put the question. So do you think the participants are asking questions? Because I see in the discussion, they're giving only comments, no questions. Anybody can help me in that. Otherwise, the last questions to all of you that um, <clears throat> what advice do you have for the young generation who are going to be engaged in the um, environment and clean tech areas as a starter, an innovator, as a professor? What advice you want to give? Yes, sir. You see, if you ask me, uh, not only from an immunology point of view, but for an overall biology point of view, this virus has taught us a very big lesson. See, remember, if you look at the total biological system, total virus genus, there are one million type of virus in this world. One million types, species. Out of that, one species is corona. And out of that, there are seven coronavirus. One created this havoc. So this is time to respect other living organisms in the world. See, world will be a beautiful place if humans are not there also. Please remember that. We are part of world. The animals, the plants and others are all beautiful things. So that is important. But more important is we need to invest more on biology. Understand. See, we don't have virology institute in this institute. We don't have immunology institute. There is only one year. I understand. I understand. I think that will be a and different... People, because the healthcare understanding, look, one small virus because we travel too much. This the same thing happened in 1920 in Spanish flu. It didn't spread because there is no air flight that time. People were not flying each other. And this is what we have got. One virus. So it is time. Time to learn from things so that we could understand our potential and do something innovative. But please remember biology and healthcare. That's important. You can do wonderful things only, only if you are alive. Right? 
that this virus has taught you very very thank wrong you, way <laughs> thank you anything anything from you dr sanjeev um yeah very brief uh, already uh, dr, dr panda has uh, highlighted what i wanted to say see our planet is uh, you know very old and we have been here for a very short time uh, considering considering uh, everything and in that short time we started off on our journey to invent a light bulb we wanted to you know brighten up our nights but from there we have deviated a long way and in the last i would say few decades uh, we have exponentially polluted the environment right uh, so all the species if you think about it on a very large time scale they were living happily and then all of a sudden they see this very quick uh, change in the environment we have sort of uh, terraformed this planet to something else which is not even compatible to us so we need to since we are the source of the problem we also need to find the solutions and use the same weapon technology and you cannot centralize these solutions i personally i strongly believe that the answer is decentralized we pollute in a decentralized way and we also should treat and manage our waste in a decentralized way you cannot expect that all uh, pollute individually there will be somebody you know sitting there who will take care of all our problems Very so nice. that is my uh, uh, you know advice to all the youngsters which is to think about the planet i remember you know i uh, uh, highlight my first statement back we are renting time and space on this planet we are not here forever uh, you know the the planet is much bigger than us uh, and in fact i would like to uh, if i i am definitely have to paraphrase there was a very nice uh, line from one of these movies uh, which i think is the day the earth stood still uh, the remake of it uh, which is uh, if uh, you know if the planet dies humanity dies uh, but if uh, humanity dies the planet survives okay which is which is a uh, very true very uh, true. Really, really true in this uh, thank you thank in. you yeah i'll come to dr amit later on i think son anything very brief huh? we are we have hardly 30 seconds left son are you there are you lost son so dr amit from your side the no so just a very quick thing in fact we we need to respect the planet uh, you need to have purpose and then if you have the appropriate purpose you will make profits so that is where it is the three pre principle planet purpose and profit would actually be the appropriate three thing of the principle. mantra that we should very good i, uh, I learned today three pre principles yeah sure good thank, thank you. you thank you i think so i think we'll come to the end because there are no questions coming from uh, very new to the floor platform um Mm, okay so people are only giving comments they're not asking questions so good i think you are so good that there's no questions they meant to be answered from you i thank all of you because you know you've engaged all of the audience i could see that you know the big cheers of people have been putting there and i thank all of you especially dr panda and dr amit dr sanjeev and dr son choudhury thank you for you know joining this session and making it lively i thank byrak for you know organizing this uh, big conclave through sicc sic iit kanpur lovely platform even though this is a pandemic time not traveling but i think we could see each other and we could really converse very nicely at the you know, engagement uh, sessions thank you have a great evening thank you i think you can go to backstage bye bye thank you thank you bye bye very nice to meet all of you thank you thank you sir thank you.